the Orioles have to figure out how they are going to manage their bullpen without their star closer. And when you were looking at candidates to close games, seems like the most obvious candidate and the one that we have seen so far is Yenir Cano. We saw it in the first game when Felix Bautista was out. It was a save situation. Yenir Cano comes into the game. It is a nice luxury to have when your all-star closer goes down that you replace him with your all-star setup, man. Yeah. I mean, what a what a godsend Yenir Cano has been for this team Yeah, um, this season. Again, like we've talked about it before, but a guy who people were questioning why he was even on the spring training roster to becoming an all-star this year. I mean, what uh, just a range of, of talent um, this season for Yenir Cano. Uh, the other thing is having a guy like him who, again, has that dog in him. He's built for the moment. Uh, staring down hitters after he strikes him out. He is a menace on the mound, not a guy you want to see if you're a hitter in the box. Um, so if you're an Orioles fan, you're really, really happy uh, to have somebody like him to back Felix up. Of course, bad situation, but uh, the Orioles' bullpen still in pretty solid hands with Cano, who also has a sub-2 ERA and is also just going out there and, and shutting people down. Yeah, Cano has also been awesome in the month of August. He has pitched 12 innings to a ERA of zero. Opponents are hitting 163 in the month of August. We've seen Cano's slider usage go up a good bit. Obviously, I think the biggest difference between Cano and Bautista is that you aren't going to see the overwhelming strikeout numbers from Yenir Cano. You might see a little bit better control. Cano has not walked as many guys this season as Felix Bautista has, but Felix Bautista is also striking out about double the guys per nine innings that Yenir Cano is this and year. you're not going to catch Felix, you know? Like right. That's a losing race if you're going to run it. Um, but Cano gets the job done, like you said. He might not get the strikeouts, but he's going to get the job done. And the one time this month, that Rockies game just a couple of days ago, uh, where he did get the loss, unearned run, right. um, and ended up scoring on a Baltimore chop. So... Is what it is. Yeah, Cano this year, five saves, a 156 ERA, which is, again, still pretty Bonkers. unbelievable. Yeah. Whip below one. I think he's probably the closest to Bautista, not in terms of the overwhelming going to strike everybody out kind of stuff. But a shutdown guy. Yes, and stuff that will just miss bats. Cano this year in the 94th percentile in barrel rate among pitchers, which means he's just not allowing a lot of hard contact, is missing a lot of barrels, quite literally. So Cano, again, still a very good replacement. I think there's a legitimate argument to be made, too, that if there was a bullpen that was most well-equipped to lose somebody like Felix Bautista, it was probably the Orioles, because they had just another all-star reliever waiting in the wings that is now being asked to cover, you know, the ninth inning rather than the eighth inning, but he's still been unbelievable this year. The yeah. Orioles, not that any team wants to lose the best reliever in baseball, but the Orioles may be the most well-equipped to have this happen, unfortunately. Yeah, and he's a guy who comes equipped with one insane pitch, which is yeah. that sinker kind of change-up thing that runs in on righties, runs away from lefties. Uh, that's the kind of pitch that guys walk away from the box going, what the heck was that? Yeah. And yeah. how do I hit it? Like, how am I supposed to be able to hit that thing? Um, so you have that on your side, too, when you're in your Cano. Um, but you're right. If any bullpen was equipped with a guy who could replace a, a talent like Felix Bautista, it's the Orioles with Yenner Cano. Yeah, so let's talk about what that means, moving Yenner Cano to your closer role. I think that's probably the most obvious thing. I think occasionally we could see some other guys mixed in in a ninth inning role, like we saw Yenir Cano mixed in with Felix Bautista every once in a while. It's going to have a trickle-down effect because if you move Yenir Cano from your setup man to your closer, well, now you need a new setup man. And if you are moving somebody from sixth, seventh inning to setup man, then you need a new sixth, seventh inning guy. So I think probably the guy behind Cano seems to be Danny Kulo, who has been, again, just really good this year. Yeah. And 
another guy who at the beginning of the season when the Orioles traded for Danny Coulomb, it was kind of like, okay, why? I don't really understand why we're trading for Danny Coulomb, but he has been excellent this year. He's appeared in 50 games with a 259 ERA, has one of the best fastball spin rates in the entire game. Again, not overwhelming stuff, but the strikeout numbers are pretty good. The control is great. I think Danny Coulomb is probably the logical next guy to be your setup man to replace Yanir Cano, who's replacing Felix Bautista. Absolutely. I mean, he's been so effective this season in any role that the Orioles have put him in. Uh, so I think he's absolutely your guy to bridge you to Cano because, like we said, I mean, what they had was so unbeatable, Cano to, to Bautista. It was almost like the game was over in the seventh if they had the lead. Um and I think Coulomb obviously isn't that dominant, but he could go in and do a job just like they could. So, And we've seen him do it very recently. So he's a guy that I have immense confidence in to be able to get into that role uh, and really lock in, especially down the stretch here. He's underratedly like a nine-year vet. So he's yeah. been around the league um, and a guy who knows that uh, playoff baseball is not something that comes every year. So... He's a guy I like to lock in and get ready for the playoffs and know that his role is a really, really important one on this team. Yeah, whip just over one. Kind of a sneaky 11 strikeouts per nine. He's a good I don't know player. if I really think of Danny Coulomb as a high strikeouts guy, but that 11 strikeouts per nine, second highest in the Orioles' bullpen right now. Another guy I do want to mention, as if you are following along on YouTube and Facebook, got a comment about D.L. Hall on YouTube and how he could kind of be in a David Price sort of role, like when David Price went to the bullpen for the Rays when he was a rookie, became Adam Wainwright too. a really, yeah, Adam Wainwright did the same thing. D.L. Hall, I think, is really intriguing as a bullpen possibility. He is back in the Orioles bullpen now, took a lot of time off this season, went down to the FCL. We know, you know, D.L. Hall didn't have the velocity that he wanted to have that really made him the pitcher that we have become accustomed to seeing over the last few years. When he was first up in the majors this year, the fastball was hovering right around 92, 93 miles per hour. That drastically changes the quality of pitcher that D.L. Hall yeah. is because a lot of his game is built off of dominant fastball, and then I'm going to get you really off balance for some big break off-speed stuff. That may not have the best control in the world, but you're already all over the place because you're trying to watch out for 